The sound of laughter is soothing for a lot of these women, who for the past couple of years have lived less than joyous lives. If we say we're sick, this is the Olive Branch of Hope, a breast cancer support group that meets once a month in the basement of Revival Time Tabernacle, a church in West Toronto. The strong ones talk about that. The brainchild of Leela Springer, the group was formed seven years ago after her own private journey with cancer led her through a frustrating search for support. Oh dear. Leela, by her own admission, was a very busy person. Busy at work, busy at church, busy at home. Her body and health always came second. When I actually found a lump, I thought, hmm. But, you know, I didn't act on it right away. Mm. You know, I, I was busy. Mm. In fact, it took weeks before she saw her doctor. A mammogram was ordered and the lump was diagnosed as simply a cyst. Leela resumed her life of traveling and working, but for some reason, she was still a little bothered by the diagnosis. Something deep down in, in, inside told me something was definitely wrong. And she was right. After being sent through a merry-go-round of doctors, she was finally sent to a specialist at a Toronto hospital, where she was given a diagnosis over 20,000 women receive each year in Canada. The lump wasn't a cyst. She had breast cancer. And I left and I walked to the subway and I remember walking out there and thinking, did he say what I think he said? Did he really say I have breast cancer? I have no idea how I got home. I just came home, parked the car in the driveway, ran in the door, ran upstairs to my room, closed the door, and I broke. For the next few years, Leela's life was turned upside down. Given some of the strongest chemotherapy treatments available, she sometimes even lacked the strength to read the Bible. So it was a song, she says, uh, one, that one kept her going. That my girlfriend had come over before I went for surgery, and they, they came over in a little group, and each one of them shared a scripture, and I always remember this. Cheryl looked at me. When everybody shared their nice scripture and sounded so profound, she looked at me and she said, Sister Leela, I'm very sorry. I don't have a scripture to share with you. All I have is a little chorus. Mm -hmm. And that chorus was, in Christ alone, I place my trust. Mm -hmm. And find my glory in the power of the cross. Mm -hmm. And every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope. Is Christ alone. Mm. That got me through six months, mm. you know, and, um, and every time I felt low, in Christ alone, I placed my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. Mm. But the journey was also extremely lonely. Even though she had a supportive family, the need to talk and relate to other women going through the same journey was vital. But after calling a number of churches looking for a support group to turn to, she soon realized there were none. So one day, while lying in bed, she cried out to God and made a life-changing promise to Him. So I thought to myself, I can't just ask God to heal me for the sake of healing me. I need a reason. I really need a reason. So I said to Him, if you should save my life, I'll make sure no other woman has to go through what I'm going through right now, because this is extremely lonely. And it's not because nobody cared. Mm -hmm. But it was at that particular time when I was feeling at my lowest, just sitting with a group of women, freely talking about the goodness and the grace of God would have been a welcome thing for me. And it wasn't there. What was available were support groups where there was no freedom to share faith in God. And that's where Leela saw a void she knew had to be filled. It was the waking up in the mornings and the feeling weak and you feeling your nerves shot. Um, it was <laughs> having no hair on your head and no eyebrows and no eyelid and, and, and nothing. And looking in the mirror and wondering who is that you're looking back at. It was looking at your fingernails and they're no longer looking normal because they're all black. And, and your skin's all discolored and, and all of that because of the, of the, the treatment and realizing that even in all of this, God still shows himself great. Mm -hmm. Because now I had a reason to live. Now I knew what I was going to do when I get better. So after fighting her way through sickness and six months of chemo, she and close friend Winsome Johnson, also a cancer survivor, decided to do something. Leela was determined to keep her promise to God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And with that, Olive Branch of Hope was born. Now with 30 members from all age groups and walks of life, it's a place where each can turn for friendship and encouragement through faith. 
I am Winsome Johnson, and I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, and I'm 15 years survivor. I was diagnosed in 1993 with first stage breast cancer, and they removed the, the lump and they gave me uh, radiation for five weeks, and everything is fine since. I have been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the bone marrow, eight years ago. Jackie Delfoss was first diagnosed at the age of 30, and then diagnosed a second time, five years later. I had Leela and Winsome, everybody else, and my mom and my family just walking me through this. It's, it's not easy. If you have the faith, you have the support, you know, you, you just take it one day at a time. You really, that truly is one day at a time, and you know, you, you, you get through that, that journey. So five, ten, twelve years later, um, from the first diagnosis. Um, I'm in a good place. God is awesome. Patricia and her mother Gloria were both diagnosed with breast cancer within months of each other. Yeah, mom told me in June that she had June 2002 and um, while she was going through her radiation treatment um, there was a lot of information going on and I had actually given mom a book of a cancer survivor prior to her, just when she had been diagnosed and I read that book too and I decided, oh you know, I'll do my self-examination, which I did pretty regularly and I discovered a lump in February of the following year so it was, it was pretty much while she was in the middle of her radiation treatment so I could not tell her about it. I knew that she would be devastated. Gloria was devastated, but through the help of their support group, they found solace. But we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we take him at his word. And uh, by doing that, we come together, we talk together, we share things together. And I believe that also helped. You know, the olive branch, um, the, the name is so, is so fitly, the olive branch of hope. The women in the group are determined um, they encourage each other and encu we encourage each other with positive messages mm -hmm. that yes we are believers in Christ but yes we have a sickness or yes we're walking through this sickness or we're walking through this journey but people who are experiencing the same things can actually dialogue on the same level and not be afraid to say that they're Christians mm -hmm. and not be afraid to say well we're going to pray about you going for that test tomorrow. So the Olive Branch of Hope is, gives an atmosphere, it's a, it's a safe environment to talk about a Christ and how Christ is helping us walk through this illness to inspire other people to not be afraid. And that sometimes can be a daunting task. Things like this is not easy. You know, running a support group, you know, for people with cancer, it's not easy. If you sit on the phone, if you sit in the office and people call in and say, you know what, I was just diagnosed with breast cancer and the tears are coming. That's not easy to be able to, to encourage them to go on. And, and, and the question they ask you, am I going to die? Am I going to die? It's not easy. So some of the things that God calls us to do, it's not easy. But. If he called you to do it, he will equip you. And in the past seven years, she has seen that and has been strengthened by the response she has received. The encouraging part is to meet people and say, you know, since you spoke out about it, gave me courage to speak out about it. Since you, since you now have a group, that tells me that I can talk about what I'm going through. And that's the encouraging part. Yes, Lord, there's a reason I'm here. Mm. Mm. And I thank you for keeping me here mm. for this reason, so that people can find hope. And she too has found hope. Now cancer-free, she believes that her illness was for a greater good and is grateful for all that has come out of it. There's no feeling like it. Mm. It's, a, it's a sense of completeness. It doesn't matter what else happens. Mm. It doesn't matter you know, where I go. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if the sky falls. It's, knowing that I'm on this earth doing what I was born to do. Mm. And that is encouraging women, empowering women. God has opened up doors and, and opportunities for me that I know I never would have had if I didn't have breast cancer. Mm. Now, I'm not suggesting 
that someone has to go through an illness such as I did mm -hmm. in order to discover their purpose. That's just what it took for me mm -hmm. to discover mine. I made it home. If you are interested in finding out more about the Olive Branch of Hope and how you can start your own support group, visit our website at crossroads.ca. In Toronto, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.